Please note, this video only highlights a few select rules and should not be viewed as a substitute to reading through the official rule book. The official rule book can be found on the OCF website. The jury president of each series event has full authority over the event and is the only person authorized by the OCF to interpret the rules. The jury president also has the authority to change or modify rules for an event, and any changes made would be explained in the technical meeting prior to the event. E and D athletes do not have isolation at their local competitions. When competitors arrive at the gym, they must first check into the isolation zone, also known as ISO. Each category has a specific ISO closing time that competitors must arrive within. Only registered competitors, coaches, and competition officials are permitted inside ISO. Competitors must remain inside ISO until it's their turn to climb, and are not allowed to see the competition boulders, watch each other climb, or communicate with anyone outside of isolation. Electronic communication devices of any kind are not permitted inside the isolation zone. This includes cellular telephones, as well as any smart device that can send and or receive information in some type of wireless fashion, including Bluetooth headphones and many newer cameras or ebook readers or gaming consoles, etc. Once it's the competitor's turn to climb, they exit ISO and enter the competition area. They are escorted over to the on-deck chair by their first boulder, and wait for the remainder of the rotation period to finish. The competition runs on a five-minute rotation period. Competitors get five minutes to try and complete their boulder problem, followed by a five-minute rest before trying the next problem, and so on. Once the horn sounds, signaling the start of the next rotation period, the competitor may turn around and the problem judge will direct them to their boulder problem. Once the timer reaches one minute left, a warning sound goes off. One minute remaining. Should a competitor be on the wall when the five minutes is up, they will be called off by the judge and will not be allowed to finish their attempt. Should a competitor complete the problem under the five minutes, they return to the on-deck chair until the time is up. Local series competitions for the E and D categories will be one 90-minute round, with eight problems for competitors to try in any order they want. Competitors may try each boulder up to six times, as long as there is enough time. Every attempt must be judged by an OCF judge. Competitors are not allowed to receive instructions, or beta, about a boulder while they are making any attempts. E-category athletes are not eligible for bouldering provincials. D athletes will use the same format at bouldering provincials as the older categories. All series competitions for the C, B, A, Junior and Open categories will use the standard on-site format with an isolation zone. There will be a qualification round with five boulders for each competitor and a final round with four boulders for each competitor. The top six competitors in each category from the qualification round will advance to the final round. Strict isolation rules will apply during the entire competition. Each problem has a starting position marked with four pieces of tape. Finish holds are marked with one piece of the same colored tape, and a zone hold marked somewhere in between with a different colored tape. Black tape is used to mark any area or holds that are out of bounds. Competitors are allowed to touch the black tape, but not any part of the wall or holds beyond the black tape. If they do, they will be called off and the attempt will count against them. Note, flagging past the black tape is allowed. In certain situations, black tape is defined as soft black tape, meaning you can step on or touch the wall past the black tape, just not use any of the holds. This would be communicated during the competitor's technical meeting ahead of time. Each boulder has a clearly marked start with four pieces of tape, one piece for each hand and foot. It's up to the competitor to figure out which hand or foot to put where. However, they must achieve a proper starting position by touching all four points of contact at the same time before they can progress any further into the problem. Holds with multiple pieces of tape on the same hold indicate multiple hands or feet or a combination of both 
need to start on that hold. The competitor's actual attempt begins once every part of the competitor's body has left the ground. Here are a number of examples of correct and incorrect starts. Here are some other situations that occasionally occur during starts and how they are judged. You can briefly kick or tap one or two of the starting points with your feet as long as you make contact with all four starting points at the same time, and you must establish control with both hands before you move from the starting position. If a volume is taped as a starting point, any hold on the volume or the volume itself may be used as a point of contact. You are allowed to put an extra point of contact on a starting hold, so long as you move into the proper starting position before progressing into the problem. You are allowed to touch or grab part of the wall itself to help you get established into the proper starting position. However, you are not allowed to touch or grab a volume to establish a start if it is not a designated starting point of contact. Once the last point of contact leaves the ground, the competitor's attempt has begun. Even if the proper start hasn't been achieved, the attempt counts against them. It's important to be careful in adjusting your final point of contact on the ground, as any hop leaving the ground could potentially be perceived as an attempt at the problem judge's discretion. Please note, competitors are not permitted to touch any hold that is not a start hold prior to their attempt, or it will count as an attempt against them. The zone hold is awarded when a competitor controls that hold by making contact with it with at least one hand and achieves a stable position, or uses it with at least one hand to make a climbing movement toward the next hold on the problem. Reaching out and touching or slapping the zone hold does not count. Here are a few examples. An attempt on a boulder is considered successful once a competitor has controlled the finish hold with both hands. There is no specified amount of time required to hold the finish, but the judge will hold up their hand and announce OK or top once they deem the competitor has controlled the finish with both hands. Here are some examples of successful attempts. Here are some examples of unsuccessful attempts. Remember, two hands must touch the finish hold in control, and slapping the finish hold, or holding one hand over top of the other hand, does not count. Other reasons an attempt on a boulder may be considered unsuccessful and the competitor called down by the judge is if the competitor uses any holes or t-nuts provided for the placement of holds excluding bolt holes on an actual hold. Uses any unfinished side or top edges of the wall, however grabbing the edge of a volume is permitted. Uses any advertising or informational placard fixed to the wall. Touches the ground with any part of the body. Fails to complete their attempt within the five minute rotation period. Using any object on the wall that is not intended for climbing, such as a sprinkler head, will also be ruled as an unsuccessful attempt. Competitors may brush holds themselves or ask a brusher to do it if there is a brusher available. Competitors may only clean holds on a boulder with the brushes provided by the organizer and are not allowed to use their own brushes. Competitors may only brush holds they can reach from the ground and are not permitted to add chalk to a brush, add tick marks, or chalk non-start holds from the ground.
Competitors are not permitted any audio listening equipment while they are climbing. Spectators are also not permitted to talk to the competitors as they wait in their on-deck chairs. Spectators or coaches are not permitted to give advice or beta to competitors while they are climbing. This includes telling competitors to breathe or relax. General statements like come on or go are permitted and encouraged. A technical incident is defined as anything that results in a disadvantage or unfair advantage to a competitor, which is not the result of an action on the part of the competitor. The most common instances are spun or broken holds. Should a hold spin or break without causing the competitor to fall, the competitor may choose to continue climbing, in which case the attempt counts as normal. The competitor can also choose to call a technical and come off the wall. Once the hold is fixed, the competitor's next attempt would be considered a continuation of the last attempt, meaning the earlier attempt would not count against them. When a technical incident occurs, the judge will note the time in the current five-minute rotation. The competitor is allowed the time remaining at the moment the technical incident occurred, with a minimum of two minutes. If the technical can be fixed quickly within the current time rotation period, the competitor can simply choose to resume their attempts in the current time period. Otherwise, the competitor can choose to resume their attempts with the noted time remaining, with a minimum of two minutes, in a future rotation period to be determined by the head judge. Once a competitor's last point of contact has left the ground, the problem judge will mark down a lowercase l under the attempt. If the competitor reaches the zone hold, the judge will turn the l into a lowercase t under the same attempt. If the competitor then tops the problem, the judge will turn the lowercase t into an uppercase t. At the end of each round, officials total up the tops, zones, and attempts. In this example, the competitor topped three of the five problems. They earned zone on four of the five problems. It took seven attempts to get those tops. It took eight attempts to get those four zones. Note, you don't get more points for reaching the same zone hold multiple times, only the first time. The competitor who tops the most problems is ranked the highest in that round. If two or more competitors have the same number of tops, then the competitor who has the most zones is ranked higher. If two or more competitors have the same number of tops and the same number of zones, then the competitor with the least number of attempts to get their tops is ranked higher. If two or more of the competitors are still tied after that, then the competitor with the least number of attempts to get their zones is ranked higher. If two or more competitors are still tied after the final round, then the competitor with a higher ranking during the qualification round will be ranked higher. Please refer to the current OCF rules section 11 for our method of breaking ties at bouldering competitions. Appeals concerning the judgment or scoring of an attempt may be made by competitors or registered coaches. They can be made at specified times during the competition or within five minutes of the posted results. Appeals must be made in writing and accompanied by an $80 appeals fee. If the appeal is successful, the fee will be returned. The jury president may take one of the following actions in respect to the infringements of competition rules by a competitor or coach. One, an informal warning. Two, an official warning followed by the showing of a yellow card. Three, disqualification and the showing of a red card. The issue of two yellow cards at the same event will result in the disqualification of the competitor or coach from that competition. Yellow card offenses include the following. Red card offenses include Also, the JP can remove any person from the gym who acts in a disrespectful manner or violates the rules. Once again, please note, this video only highlights a few select rules and should not be viewed as a substitute to reading through the official rulebook. The official rulebook can be found on the OCF website at www.climbontario.ca forward slash rules.